Part two of the women's lecture. All right. Now, <clears throat> this next artist that we're going to be talking about is Kara Walker. Now, <clears throat> one thing you need to understand about Kara Walker, uh, her work is a little different um, than most artwork I've shown you. Um, I tend to play the neutral card in a lot of my art that I show. Uh, I try to stay away from risque and borderline um, sexual content if I can, uh, just depending on the diverse group of the people in this. <clears throat> now, um, but this artist, as for for the subject matter, um, I feel it's important to show and talk about. Um, and I know that I'm only doing the talking, so in my class, I get the luxury of face-to-face -face and having conversations about Kara Walker, with Kara Walker. And, and I also see the reactions of the faces from the students about Kara Walker. Now, a lot of you have seen my picture at the beginning of the... So you know that I'm um, Caucasian, white. And so, to be talking about... Uh, African American subject matter, uh, especially during the slave times of uh, the 18th century, um, it's a uh, it's a little bit uh, kind of challenging in that in that disregard. Um, now, the subject matter that I'm going to be focusing on, yes, there is <clears throat> there is slavery issues. Uh, there is dealing with um, uh, sexual connotation. There is rape situations. Also, there is a portion that's dealing with um, just vulgar natures in this. So I'm just giving you a pre-warning. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, I've been given this lecture for probably the last eight years, and Kara Walker had a show at at the Fort Worth Modern <clears throat> and a group of uh, people were trying to figure out how who should talk about Kara Walker now my mother Linda Ridgway and I we we both went to this exhibit together and it's interesting when her and I can talk about any work pieces but then there is there's some there's some languages that were in this show that came out of my mother's mouth, and I'll explain when I get through the lecture. <clears throat> but what, just hearing some things like that, I was like, okay, her and I couldn't even walk through it together, um, and we can go through almost any art piece. But there's just some there's just some sexual connotation. It's a little there's that break there. So I'm gonna just break it out and say that now. <clears throat> first of all. Her work is very beautiful, and that's that's why I'm bringing her up as an artist. So I'm just giving a little prelude. Now, let's go right into the first piece. Um, so here. <clears throat> now, this work is called African Princess. Um, the stories that she illustrates in her work, uh, they play off the idea of the narrative uh, illustrations that you saw in Gone with the Wind in the early edition, not the first edition, but one of the earliest editions in the 1970s where illustrations <clears throat> were done at the intro of every new chapter. And the Gone with the Wind in the 70s edition, what she looked at, and she noticed that all the story narratives basically uh, had no positive um, depiction of African Americans or anything of good in, in the in the ideas behind it so so she kind of plays off of that gone with the wind 1970s uh, edition uh, book narratives and but she also plays with some of the negativities in, involved and some of the stories and the research that she finds um, are very um, untold, and <clears throat> a lot of people are like, well, I've never heard that story, so that must not be true. <clears throat> if you're one of those kinds of people that 
you're like, how did I never hear this story? And I'm this, I'm at this age, and I never heard this story. There's a show of two ladies that I like on a podcast. Um, um, uh, stuff you never, you you might never, might not have heard of in history class. <clears throat> is the name of the podcast uh you can click on apple and, and these two ladies they crack me up sometimes with some of the things they say but also they're one of those groups of uh people that i can literally listen to them for hours just like how you're listening to me and i i believe that's what made me do this for you guys um <clears throat> you have the luxury of a powerpoint uh they they only do podcasts so i don't have to imagine what they're talking about <clears throat> but, um, so we're going to be talking about, what's the story about? Well, the story is about, uh, this was an African princess that was abducted from Africa and then brought into, um, onto a boat, and she was such a powerful woman that she was starting to get the men riled up, uh, that were in the slave quarters, and they were going to try to th overthrow the boat, and to keep her from getting too much power they brought her up to the top of the boat let all the men watch and they hit her in the back of the head and threw her off the boat and here she is sinking to the bottom of the ocean and so it's got this weightlessness imagery it's got this floating kind of a atmosphere and so yeah but it's also the silhouettes on this are so stunning so strong and when I saw this for the first time, I, I thought, wow, look at this. This is such a great art piece. Now, what is it? It's just paper on paper. It's black paper that's glued down to white paper. And she does these silhouettes, and she either does them on paper or she does them on the wall. And here's an example. You can see uh, the framed on the right side of her picture and the and the wall mural on the left side she can do either or she can put them on once she gets the drawing completed she she uploads it into a computer and then a machine cuts out her imagery and then she shows people how she wants the image to be arranged uh, from there now her murals <clears throat> are um, are very now this one is probably one of the more graphic ones um, so this one's all about violence and hatred um, so you know this is one of the main things when I talk at Cedar Valley College <clears throat> the school is dominantly um, minorities there and, and I've gotten really comfortable with the student body there talking about um, you know politics to anything and I, I really don't see um, color like some people see you know if I saw a group of black men walking down the street I don't immediately want to go across the street but I do look at people and their character same thing if I saw a group of white men walking down the street I'd still would look at them and then look at their character <laughs> um, and it just depends on their clothing and the way that they walk and their attitudes if they're walking aggressive well then I get a little nervous on both sides um, but I will say um, that's one campus that I feel completely safe on when there's a police academy there and at all times I know that there are future police officers and police officers on that campus so I do feel very safe at that campus um, and I never once feel threatened and I think the student body has that kind of a feel um, but yeah it's it's it is there is issues of race and there are issues of hatred out there in the world and you, you can't be blind to that 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 there's people that are very angry, especially right now, as you watch the Olymp uh, the Olympics now, the the election. Um, yeah, there's uh, there is issue, and there always will be. Um, and so here, um, you see this kind of attitude where it is kind of broken down. Now, <clears throat> one of the things about um, society is when you look at children and play you go to a public park 
All right, and there's all different kinds of mixed races there. But if you notice, a child will go up to a person <clears throat> of different na nationality, and if they connect and they play well together, they become friends. Now, as you get older and you're in your teens, do you still make that same kind of connection? Sure. Okay, I think in the 20s and in 30s, and then as you get older, I see more people don't really look for those connections as well. And that's one of the things is once you find yourself in a, in a group of people that's acceptable, well, that's when <clears throat> um, uh, you kind of find your own demographic, your own people, the own people you hang out with. But as kids and children... If you just know the person and the person in front of you, you become friends with that person pretty much spontaneously as a child. But as an adult, there's a lot more, I always say, there's a lot more risk when you friend somebody as an adult. Um, and uh, because you get connected to those people and then... And that's one of those things. It's it's a little trickier because there's a lot there's a lot of deeper issues than just playing a game with a friend when you're a child. And so here we're going to be talking about that. So <clears throat> if you start on the left to the right, like you read, um, you have a man playing a good, uh, a drum in a band. That's a stereotypical 1970s kind of a style. Eyes. Uh, african-american marching band okay connotation uh... but then you go down to the bottom you see a little boy okay playing with another boy and they have a gun and the little boy has a stick on the trigger of the gun and the little boy has shot his brains out by accident as they're playing with the gun um, then you see a lady um, and this is a white lady uh... waving to the um, to the two boys to come with her and then you see the brother um, <clears throat> or boyfriend or whatever um, coming with a shovel to hit them uh, over the head with that shovel but the one the next one here is the hard one um, <clears throat> you see right here there's a, a father pulling his son away uh, from a little girl now he has a belt there and he's gonna go whip his son for talking to the to the little white girl and then the little white girl's holding an umbrella all right but then you look over at the f at the father of the white girl and he has a rope and he's going to lynch uh that little boy or the father one or the other and the little brothers to that little boy is uh they're all hanging on to the back of the slave owner and they're choking him out um they're they're killing him so um so again it's got this kind of circle of hatred right there and that one little image um and then the last image okay uh you have this character and he's kind of defecating on top of another uh, character and again she plays with this idea of defecation you'll see it even here in this next image so here now the way the walls are are built in most of her ex exhibitions uh, she likes to have these curved walls so you don't see it all at once when you first enter the room and as you walk out you can kinda feel out the illustration and <laughs> And as I started this in installation, I started actually from um, from the right to the left, and sorry. And as I was going through, I was like, "Ooh, look how this negative space down here at the bottom has this grass-like feel with these little black orbs." And I didn't know what they were. And then as I went further down the the row, I realized I just admired somebody's poop. Okay, again, it has that defecation. But if you notice here, okay, this is a really clear example of foreground, middle ground, and background. So you look in the background, has this little island-like shape. And then here you have in the middle ground the the little boy getting ready to be hit in the head with a hammer and then or an axe and then you have his sister who's going to uh, 
with the word shank. It has like a, a long stick and it's going to spear uh, this girl before she hits her little brother. But then you look over here at the far left in the foreground. All right. Now, <clears throat> this woman, okay, this, this is not anything that's dealing with a uh, historical thing. It's actually going with something with current affairs. And <clears throat> she talks about how <clears throat> generation after generation, um, grandmothers are taking care of their own kids, and then they're taking care of their grandchildren. And here we even see like a four generations where it's the grandmother takes care of her child, then takes care of of uh, her child, and then the and then the if the baby is sometimes taken care of by the grand by the grandmother. And this is something that's become more and more common. Um, I talk to a lot of students, and and I get introduced to their parents. And I'm like, oh, so you must be so-and-so's parents. And they're like, grandparents. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then and then, um, and then, then I typically don't meet their their initial parents because the grandparents are raising their grandchild. So I see that a lot, um, especially more and more the last four or five years. Um, I, I don't know the reason. Uh, economically, probably that's the reason. But it, it's a lot of things. So she's kind of playing with those stereotypical characteristics there. Now, <clears throat> this next one um, is where she's straight out copying uh, little portions of Gone with the Wind. Okay, you look at the 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 character over on the far left, and she's getting ready to kiss the the gentleman. Okay, now this is. A very sexualized one okay this is all about sex in this one um, and if you've ever seen the movie Gone with the Wind um, Scarlet who's who's the uh, person that's everyone's you know grabbing grab uh, gravitating towards she's in love with one man at the beginning and she's super flirtatious but he's kind of more reserved and he's in love with somebody else <clears throat> and she's throwing herself onto him, and so basically, what what he is saying here is um, that her and him should should get together, and he's playing coy, and so you see the little girl who is choking the chicken, so to speak, um, is is what is going to be the future for her, for her. But then, if you look under her skirt, um, that she is being fondled by one of the slaves. So again, it's kind of this fortuitous um, what's going to happen for their future. Now, <clears throat> if you go into the middle, there is this, uh, this scene where a man is floating in the air and he's getting oral fixation from another a uh, woman who's a slave and is a white man with a with an African American slave, <clears throat> and you look at this and uh, and this is the piece where this is the first piece that my mother and I when we walked through the exhibit and uh, and I was like, okay, I just don't get what's making that guy float and and I look at it and and that big black orb I'm like I don't see what it is. and my mom goes, oh it's it's his big cock. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, Mom. Okay. That's when I realized at this moment we could not do this together because she would say things like that off the cuff, and I'm like, I can't, I can't hear that. <laughs> so it's already uh, intense artwork. So I, in, I told her she had to go ahead of me, and... Um, and she thought it was hilarious that that it that it made me uncomfortable. So, anyway, now as we look through here, we have the next piece coming up, and now this is a well image. So you have here where it's got where see how she utilized the stairs, and she's talking about how slave owners would sometimes drop the slave down a well with the baby that they created and then they inhabit 
parts of this well and they become part of this but then as you walk around and then you come back and you look underneath the stairs you see a slave a sodomizing a, a slave owners uh, a slave owner there at the bottom and so she she's playing with this whole duality you know some want to be hidden some uh, want to uh, destroy the evidence of a relationship and then now we get to the next image so you have this young lady who's frolicking in in some kind of a field area and um, and so she's frolicking and but she has a head of a white lady on the top of her head okay she's pretending to be white is what is supposed to be illustrating and this is a very um, horrific scene um, and there's many stories about slaves taking over um, the plantation and beheading um, some of the slave owners and this was really uh, more popular in Louisiana um, than anywhere <clears throat> now th besides being part of the um, uh, the the negativity on the African Americans with the white walls and the black imagery, when the walls are black with white imagery on there, it's negative towards the white. But I do find kind of interesting. I have trouble finding a lot of these images online. They seem to not always be there. And if they are there for me to show you guys some of the more horrific ones, um, it's it's actually interesting. I had to pay for them. And I, I refuse to pay for any image <laughs> when there's things online. So if you're looking, you know, take a look and look up Kara Walker and, and look for the white images. It's a little harder to find. Uh, you, you'll see tons and tons of black and, and white imagery. But the black wall with the white imagery, it's, it's, it's really rare to find them. And that's where I feel that some people of racist tendencies will will hide the negativity towards white people uh, on the online portion, which I find kind of interesting. Here she's playing with stereotypes that we typically see in the 1950s and and uh, in advertisement. Um, you look at uh, Aunt Jemima, you know, uh, in any of those kind of stereotypes. <clears throat> and here she's playing with that idea of stereotypes. <clears throat> now, the next one here is her book. Now, she did a pop-up book that you can actually get in almost any major museum. There's the original, and I believe she only made like an edition of 10, if I'm not mistaken. But there is, <clears throat> uh, there has been a fabrication one, and if you're curious about the fabrication um, of these pieces, uh, you can actually buy this, and I think it's like $100.00. Uh, at, at I've seen at at the museums. I think maybe on Amazon too, and and it gives every story, every image, and it breaks it down and lets you kind of understand the world that she's going through. I read it one time, and uh, it was very useful for especially this PowerPoint. Here are some of the imagery involved. Okay, so now we're on the last part. <clears throat> um, we only have two slides left of hers. <clears throat> now, she talks about the whole di idea of the slave, too. Besides being um, white versus black and black versus white, she also plays with the inner struggles and the, and the psychology of a of a slave uh, in the first piece where the house slave versus the, the field slave. And... Um, she's even playing with some of the stereotypes of like um, uh, Scarlet and Gone with the Wind where in the halfway part of the movie where she's like dedicating her life to keep the plantation. Well, that's what's going on here. She's dedicating her life to to stay proud and black. And then you look here. Uh, and she even does the stereotypes of playing with new slave versus old slave in this body of work. And this is really um, some of the more horrific ones where they're more violent 
and sometimes even more vulgar um, in some aspects. So, all right. <clears throat> now let's get into Kiki Smith. Now, um, Kiki Smith is a printmaker. Um, she treats her art like it's a diary. All right, it's all a, a way to to work her internal um, feelings and emotions into her work. Um, she really doesn't care if her work sells or not. Um, she wants she wants to make art to appease herself. Okay, and I find that this is kind of more gratifying towards her. And luckily, she sells really, really well. But she also plays with a lot of um, emotional issues with her work, and so we're going to get into that. Okay, <clears throat> now here she is working in the studio. <clears throat> She's a printmaker by trade, and you see all the little figurines that she's made. Um, and so as you look at her figures and her forms and how that they, they line up, um, it, it's something very simple, okay? And for her, she plays with a lot of the human form, uh, but mostly in herself. So those might be just different stages of her as she grow as she's been growing up. But here is one of her more popular pieces. Uh, this is one of her Alice in Wonderland series. So here she is as Alice. Um, it's a, it's a repl uh, rep representation of her as a child, as Alice. And this is a large print. This is about, uh, I would say, 60 inches by 40 inches. Um, and she made a, a large edition of this, and each one of them are hand-colored. So quite quite beautiful. Uh, piece and so she did a whole Alice in Wonderland series. Little Red Riding Hood was another series, and she even played with that in future works. Okay, or her and the and the wolf became more uh, than just enemies. But she has a very beautiful drawing quality about her. Now. <clears throat> For these pieces, <clears throat> someone that's that deals with emotion in most of her work and self uh, self evaluation in in her work, these were a little interesting. <clears throat> uh, during nine eleven, um, that was a really interesting time for art because um, no one had a message that was positive. Uh, that was really at the beginning of 9-11. Everyone was kind of like in shell shock. And she made this whole thing where she did these prints of these birds. And on each little bird's mouth, it had the address of the person and, um, and their name who had passed away. And so she did one bird for every person and did it through there. Okay. So she, right here, is doing a, a whole group of uh, people falling from the wall. Now, when you look at the crows on the ground here, um, what is this representing? Well, she's from up north, and if you live in like the Midwest, and I would say anywhere in the Kansas City to... St. Louis, kind of in that middle area where you're not quite south and you're not quite north. You're kind of right there in the middle. When birds are migrating through the United States, and if they get stuck before the cold hits their area, um, when they're roosting in the trees, the, um, the birds will sit there and the snow will build onto the branches and then the weight of the birds and the weight of the snow snaps the branch and the birds fall to the ground and typically they die <clears throat> and so here um, they're illustrate she's illustrating this just like the birds falling from the branches onto the ground and dying that's what this is about and same thing she felt like when people were falling out of 9-11 that out of the building that they were just like the birds falling from the branch and hitting the ground and so <clears throat> I actually thought out of all the pieces that 
this was probably one of the more better ones. Um, uh, it actually worked out uh, in her for her, um, but there was not very much good art at that time. Now, here's the next portion. <clears throat> Now, this portion is dealing about her as a woman. Now, I am a man, um, so I don't truly understand all the ins and outs of um, of a of being a woman, um, because being a man, that's that's my end. But I do have a a daughter, and as I look at my daughter, and she's now eleven, and and everyone's like, "Oh, it's just starting," and and I can see changes, and but here she's kind of illustrating that those changes and how things work. But instead of just doing it like with a body type, what she does is she uses it uh, and does this change with uh, the idea of pajamas. Now, when you think about pajamas that you wear, okay. The pajamas kind of state your your age in so, in in the way she's depicting this. At first, your pajamas are very comfortable and cute and cozy, um, and usually long down to your ankles. And then uh, your pajamas start to resemble something that might relate to your mother's. And so there's two images next to that. And then the next pajamas. Um, it might be a little shorter, it might be um, more fun. And then, if you notice, the in the fourth image, the foliage is now kind of going all over her body. Now, what is this about? Well, if you look at the very first one to the fourth one, there is a little uh, seed that gets planted, and the plant starts to grow, just like talking about maturity, and by the time... It gets to the fourth image, the the plants in full mature mode. Okay, and so that's what's going on with this piece. Now, um, and so basically, she's talking about um, that time where it's in the twenty something where uh, you you know you, you are you are naked, but you're not. Um, but you're still concealed, um, and it's a little different. Um, it's all dealing about sexuality at that portion. And then the last one, she is wearing pajamas, but they are more revealing. And this is talking about that 30-something-year-old, or late 20s, that are when you're first married, and the idea of pajamas are supposed to be more seductive. And that's what she's talking about here. Now, in this one, it's a little bit different. It's on the on the end of the cycle, so um, so it starts right off the bat with uh, that thirty something group, and then moves into the forties, fifties, and then sixties, seventies group, where you know it's you're not quite old old, but you're old enough to where you know things are really changing. And you're not too young that you don't, and if you also notice the pajamas get more and more comfortable, and it almost kind of reverses of what the first one was, where it kind of goes in a, in a backwards motion. And so, now here <clears throat> is her inner child, and she says that we all have an inner child and in who we listen to. Um, and so she created her own inner child and put this in the space. Now, this is a cast of her body at the age of 50. Now, at the age of 50, uh, her cast, um, she said that not very many women um, um, show off their body at 50 um, because they feel that they're not beautiful and 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 no one wants to see a 50 year old woman is what she said and so she's so she did this casting and then a week later after the casting was done um, she found out she had stage 3 breast cancer and it was a very aggressive breast cancer and um, and so this really uh, became a difficult piece for her because 
here she feels beautiful and doesn't know she's sick. And then afterward, um, the, her body's completely changed. And so she here um, <clears throat> illustrates this in this piece. Now, uh, when she looked at it after it was completed, it did not have the butterflies on it, and she said it felt like a ghost of her. And by adding the butterflies, it added this femininity to her um, and gave it more life. And she's taken this from Frida Kahlo. Okay. Now, the floating hands and feet in the exhibits. Now, these can be kind of confusing. Um, these are little love messages to her former husband. Now, her husband um, had um, diabetes, so he lost his legs and lost his arms. And so there are lots of pieces where she took cast of his legs and arms before they were, deca or before they were taken off from him. And, um, and then in like the little mobiles that you see in the wires, when you walk and look at the mobiles, as you move, you start to see little messages. And these are little love thoughts for her husband. And now the, the orange characters, bluish, or not orange, I mean, yellow and orange kind of character, <clears throat> um, what are these about here? Well, these are about her idea of going through chemo uh, when she was going through cancer. And now we'll say this is made out of natural beeswax, which is a very, very uh, lovely, pungent uh, smell and if you've ever smelled it, it smells super sweet and when you'd have uh, an exhibit with five to six of these inside of a museum you could smell them throughout generally the whole museum and and when you'd go into the museum uh, she would keep the um, uh, wall in front of the exhibit and when you came around the wall you would see these kind of beat up masochistic women and it was really, um, uh, it's really kind of shocking because you expect to smell something so sweet to see something really pretty. And then you see her uh, self-image being, being uh, mutilated uh, by the cancer. And that's what this is about. So it's a very strong piece. And if, and if you know anybody of, or have had anybody or yourself has gone through cancer, it's one of those things It's it can change your life and it's a very very tough tough moment but the strong people survive and that's what this is about it's about surviving now <clears throat> I'm gonna choose for my last artist to be somebody on a lighter note a younger artist um, I chose this artist because I just really love her idea behind her work and I think she has a great idea and I think um, for a lot of people they tell me um, I want to do art but it costs so much or art's too much money uh, to make bronze and here this artist does artwork that's affordable and she and this is where I just time say you have to have the right idea and she's that kind of person that has the right idea here is her imagery <clears throat> this are crowds of people and now the image is all done on tape and so you see here it's just lines and lines of of tape that she draws what she does is she puts the the tape onto a window and when someone comes in she tries to emulate them as fast as she can as they walk through her busy area in London. She's from London. Here's a little girl or young woman uh, looking at uh, art pieces. Here she is going through a journey where her father is holding up the journey. And these are just overhead sheets. And then her husband's holding the journey, and then there she is looking back at the journey. But, yeah, it's amazing how it's just a piece of tape, three pieces of tape, and a Sharpie. 
And so she does do paintings. I don't find the paintings to be that impressive as much as the as much as the tape. And she also uses post post uh, post it notes. This is a blue post note with white out and sharpie. Here's some more. So this is one she would pause for movies and let you uh, and she would just kind of stop the movie and just try to quickly get them out um, she was known I heard when she applied to Oxford she came in with two trash bags full of just notes and she got accepted with most people go to grad school with pretty portfolio cases and and here she comes in with just gigantic bags and she's like this is what I've done in the last two months so she's one of those artists that just burns out work and constantly works and uh, it's neat to see uh, her world through little tiny almost office supply kind of style so staples must really love her all right let's get into the Renaissance now uh, finish out this quiz and I uh, for this section and I will see you in the Renaissance all right talk to you guys later